Hello, I'm Amy from Contra Costa County Library, and I'm here today with my coworker, Desiree. If you have a question for Mr. Abe at any point, please put them in the chat. Today's event will be recorded and available for viewing on YouTube very soon, so don't worry. If you want to watch it again, you'll be able to. The Contra Costa County Library is happy to connect you with our resources, services, and materials at all 26 branches. Access more than 1 million physical items, including international language collections, and thousands of digital materials 24-7 at cccLIB.org. Go to our website and sign up for a digital library card today. As you can see, our summer reading program is happening right now, and there is still time for you to sign up. Again, visit cccLIB.org or your local branch for more information. I'm now going to pass this to Desiree, who's going to introduce our favorite local artist. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, we are very, very excited to have uh, Mr. Abe Rodriguez joining us again this year for another uh, Zoom art program. And today we are going to do some animal sketching. Um, I also want to mention that uh, Mr. Abe has also made for the library a really cool uh, on-demand printable project that you can do at home at any time during the summer. It is um, designing an ecosystem. So you can visit our library website, cccLIB.org, um, and you visit the summer reading page and it is on there with a printable uh, template and also a video tutorial where Mr. Abe talks us through how to make our own ecosystem for our critter friends that we like to imagine. Um, and so without further ado, I will turn it over to Mr. Abe. Hey everybody, welcome in. We're gonna start this off by um, me sharing my screen and seeing if everybody can see my work top here. Um, and I will also give you a little bit of time to go and gather any art supplies in case you already didn't get them. So let's get this show on the road. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my intro screen with um, a little picture of Pikachu on it. Nice, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Excellent, reacts are good too. I think it looks, it looks like everything worked out so far. All right, everyone. So welcome into Art Zooms with me, Mr. Abe. So before we get rolling, and while I give kind of like a little introduction, I'm going to have you guys uh, go ahead and give a little checklist of what we're going to be using today. Um, so you don't need a whole lot and you don't need anything fancy in order to sketch with us today. All you'll need um, is some drawing paper. It can be in a notebook, it can be printer paper, it can be the back of a newspaper, whatever you got. As long as it's paper that you are allowed to draw on, we'll use a couple sheets of those. So try and have some on hand in case we go through a couple more drawings with our time together. You'll need a pencil of whatever kind that you like. If you like to draw in colored pencils, if you are a pen person, that's very brave. Whatever writing tool you have, you can use for drawing today. Um, if you're someone who likes to erase, please have something um, nearby for yourself. And totally optional for today are colors. We might not have a lot of time to stop in between as we're um, drawing our different animals of today. But if you happen to have some colors nearby and you like to add that little extra touch, uh, we might get a chance to do that too, but not required. As long as you have a pencil, paper, you're pretty much good. Now a little bit more on me. I've done a couple of different um, art Zooms with the libraries in the past. It's been a whole lot of fun. Um, my name is Mr. Abe and um, I'm an artist here in the Bay Area. I'm a graphic designer by trade, but I found out that I really, really like teaching art as much as I like making art. Um, and I think the thing that makes me the most qualified to teach a lot of the art classes that I have are that I'm a huge nerd when it comes to all kinds of stuff, whether it's like science, whether it's learning about nature, um, whether it's learning about like uh, things like Pokemon or like reading and watching movies and stuff. There's all kinds of different things out there that can inspire you to make art. And today we're gonna be using nature in order to do so. Ooh, where's my intro? There it is. So today we're gonna to be drawing animals. In particular, we're gonna be practicing the skill of sketching and using a visual reference in order to help us draw a pretty accurate um, 
uh, set of creatures. But before we do, I'm going to have us try and do a little game. We're going to start by trying to draw a couple things from memory. We're going to spend like maybe a minute on these drawings. So they do not have to be perfect. They don't have to be very detailed either. But we're going to spend a quick minute just doodling a couple of creatures from memory. Then we're going to practice drawing those same creatures, but using a visual reference. By a visual reference, I mean that we're going to have a photograph that we're going to kind of look at. Like if I'm like, we're going to draw a horse, I'll show a picture of a horse so that we can draw it as accurately as we can. Not photo accurate, but we're going to use the actual animal themselves in order to be able to draw um, the creature in our own skills. But first, again, I'm going to give us about maybe like a minute or two just to draw a couple of creatures. We're going to start. There we go. I'm going to make the screen bigger. All right. We're going to draw a bird. We're also going to draw a bunny. And I would like you to draw a cat. Oops, a cat, there we go. Just really quickly on your page. We'll be getting a new page after and we're gonna compare drawings um, in a second. So by like a quick bird drawing, I mean like, okay, here's like the head, here's like some eyeballs. I think birds have like beaks or whatever. Um, it has like a little body. Maybe it's got some wings. Uh, oh yeah, birds have tails, I think. So I'm gonna stick that on the back. And then they have their two little feet. Cool. A bird. Don't worry, it gets better from here. This is just the soap. Then we're going to draw a bunny. Um, maybe some of you have some experience drawing um, different animals. Maybe you're like, actually, I've only seen a rabbit during Easter time on the stuff you can buy at the store. Well, if that's your reference, then we'll draw that. Rabbits tend to have two eyes. Here's its like nose, its little mouth. Rabbit are known for teeth. Here's its body. I don't know, they're kind of fluffy, I guess. So I'm going to draw a round body. Uh, rabbits have arms and legs. I think rabbit has big feet, if I remember. There we go. Oh, yeah, and fluffy tails. So again, this is as detailed as we need to be with these first drawings. We're going to draw and compare after we've had time drawing together. And then last but not least, let's draw a cat. Um, cats also have heads. Really common uh, theme here is that I keep drawing circles for heads. Cats have pointy ears, though. Um, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to draw a cat sitting down. Here's its two little front paws um, and its little cat legs. They kind of stick out like this, maybe. Um, and my cat's going to have a skinny tail. Oh, I forgot my cat's face. Nose. Um, cats have eyes that are like this sometimes. Yep. And ta-da! <laughs> Do not feel like you need to mimic my drawings at all. I kind of just want to see where you guys are at so that we can have fun and prepare a drawing when we're done. I know I draw really fast especially when I'm just kind of you know, putting down an idea. So I will give you maybe like another 30 seconds just to draw out our three creatures here. Nice, I see in the chat that some people are done. I see a couple people in their videos, very busy drawing which is great. If you're not able to finish your three um, starting animals, don't worry about like having to rush them or anything. These are just kind of for us to compare and you can always finish sketching on them later if you need to. That's nice. Just a couple more seconds. and time all right so this really great sketch of our animals that we started we're going to keep this to the side this will be something for us to reflect on when we have a little bit more study drawing these creatures i'm just going to set that over there and we're going to get rolling with our very first animal the first animal that we drew today 
um, was a bird. So that's what we're going to start with in our looking at a picture reference together. Birds are kind of fun because there's a lot of different shapes and size birds out there. Birds that eat berries, birds that eat worms, birds that eat other birds, birds that eat things that are way bigger. There's lots of different kinds of builds of um, and colors of birds out there. But for the most part, they all share a lot of similar features. So we're going to start with like a basic shape of a bird and then we'll build from there. So here is a nice photo reference of a bird. When you're trying to draw pretty much anything, but especially an animal that you want to be, you know, somewhat accurate to nature, um, it's great to have a reference around. A reference can be a physical thing, like an actual bird, but for drawing animals, drawing in, like a live animal can be really hard. You can imagine that like if you see a bird outside your window trying to draw, it might fly away, it might run around um, and not hold its pose. That can be difficult. But lucky for, lucky for us, we can find lots and lots of picture images um, of like different creatures. If we use the internet, we can also look through books and find like photography of different animals, which is great. Um, but you always want to have a reference around so that, you know, we can avoid drawing things like this. <laughs> All right, one of mine's overlapping the other. There we go. All right, you can see, you can compare the two animals that we have here where like my original bird kind of looks like it's just made of emojis and this bird over here is like really gorgeous. Um, I mean, I think my bird's pretty cute, but I think we could do a slightly better job at making it look a little more streamlined like the one that we see there. So let's begin. If you didn't already take out a new piece of paper, we're gonna draw together on a new one. And we're gonna use this reference here in order to draw another bird over here on the side. Now, I always like to draw my creatures, my people, whatever it is I'm attempting to draw from the head down. It just helps me know because usually there's not a lot above the head after I'm drawing and I can focus on the rest of the um, picture being below. So I'm going to start um, kind of above in my picture and I'm going to draw a circle for where my bird's head is going to be. If we look at the photo reference here on the side, there is no perfect circle with the exception of the eyeball, I guess where the bird's head is, but you can imagine that there is a circle here that makes up that part of the animal. So I'm just going to start this drawing with a basic circle. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle because we are going to be drawing on top of this, but it helps to have that shape already in there. After you've got a circle sketched on your page somewhere, we're gonna go ahead and hop on to the next shape, which is going to be the big basic shape of the body. Now, if we look at the body of the bird, a circle doesn't quite get all of what we see here. I think a more accurate shape would be an oval to establish the bottom of our bird. It's kind of like tilted, if you could imagine, it's like this, or maybe even totally sideways like that. So we're gonna draw an egg shape for a bird, which is funny because a lot of birds come from eggs. Most of them, if I know correctly. Um, so we're going to draw ourselves an oval underneath that circle shape, kind of going off to one side. I'm going off of my photo reference here, so the circle is off to my left. And right now, it kind of looks like we have a ball balanced on top of a rock, or that's about to fall off of a rock. Whether you made your bird's head kind of on the small side, or if it's a little bit on the bigger side, it's totally fine. Um, whatever size these two shapes have together are going to create different birds. A very big circle on the top would probably make more like a baby bird. A lot of baby animals have very big heads compared to their bodies. And a smaller one would make kind of a maybe a more streamlined adult bird. We're just gonna go with whatever sizes we got. If you have these two shapes, then you're in good standing. If you're feeling kind of self-conscious about either one of these, don't worry about it. We're going to be erasing and drawing over, and um, you'll, you won't see a lot of these original shapes as we go. Cool. Some of us don't take too much time drawing, and that's, you know, whether you take a little bit of time or a lot, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll try to pace ourselves together. All right. So now that we've got the head and the basic body shape of our bird, we're going to connect the two shapes in order to create this kind of like smooth streamlined shape that we see on the outside of our bird. Many birds fly and they kind of need that smooth shape from their head down to their bodies in order to be aerodynamic. 
So we're going to go to the top of the circle that we drew, and I'm going to draw a curved line that's going to kind of connect these two shapes. It's like kind of like a long S shape that's just going to connect the top of this bird's head to the body. And then I'm going to do the same to where the front of the bird's going to be. I'm going to draw a little curvy line that connects it down to this section here. Now we should have this like weird little gumdrop shape. I think that's a great place to be for an animal. Yours might be more of a gumdrop like this. It might be more of a gumdrop like that. Any one of those shapes will make a bird today. Now that we've got kind of like the major shape of the head and the body, let's start looking at these other shapes that um, are made up on this bird. Uh, first and foremost, when we go to draw the details on the head, it's nice to know where the eye is for a creature because a lot of the other features tend to like be around it. Um, for our bird, it kind of has just like this one singular color um, of feathers that takes up most of the head, but it also does have its beak. So we're going to start by drawing this, um, the eye as a circle right in the middle of that um, circle that we drew before. And then we're going to use that in order to base the shape of our beak. So we go back over here. I'm going to draw a circle right there in the middle for our bird's eye. It's kind of a little closer to the top part of the head over here, but I think mine looks pretty good. And now for the beak. A bird's beak isn't just this like triangle shape that like sticks out of the side. Like that is what the silhouette, what the kind of shadow of a bird would look like. But if you notice in the photograph, our bird's beak isn't just like a thing that stops right here. Our bird's beak kind of like does this thing where part of it is like, on that side of the face, because the bird's beak is three-dimensional, the top part of the beak is the predominant shape that we see here, and the bottom part of the beak is really just like an extra little line that sticks up like this. The photograph that I have isn't like super high quality, but if you notice, there's also a little bump here for where the bird's nose is. So we're gonna go back to our bird, and instead of this little like pizza shape that I drew on the side of it, I'm going to start kind of like where the eye is right here. I'm going to draw a little line just so I can kind of see. And then I'm going to draw a beak that curves out. I'm going to draw another line that goes inward like this, a little more towards the eye for that back part of the beak. And then I'm going to draw a line connecting the bottom of this line and the end of the beak. And then for the bottom of the beak, even though you don't see it a whole bunch, I'm going to give it just like a little sketch here. And I'm going to draw a line that goes up. And it kind of looks like this beak goes almost to the end of the one that we already drew, the lower beak, I mean the upper beak, but it stops just a little before. Understanding the beak as two different parts, as we've probably seen from maybe like a video or a photo of a bird where the top beak and the bottom beak move independently, helps us remember to draw that set as two separate shapes when we're trying to draw a more accurate looking bird. Now we could make the beak like super big. We can make the beak nice and short. The length and size of the beak is gonna be determined by what that species of bird does with that beak. And since we're just kind of using this general um, little colorful bird over here, we don't really need to be too specific on the size. If you wanna make it a long beak, if you wanna make it a short beak, up to you. As long as we remember that it's two pieces and one part goes inward towards the face, and I think we got the information we need from there.
I'll give us just another couple seconds to work on our bird's facial features. And then we're going to move on to the next part, which is the wings. Now, the wings for our bird, everybody. Thank you guys for letting me know when you're done in the chat, by the way. That's helpful for me to kind of like gauge where we're all at as a group. Now, the shape of the wing that we see here, when birds are not in flight, their wings fold up on the sides of their bodies. But it's not quite just like a little U shape that hangs out on the side. That kind of looks like a flipper. If we look here, we can see the front end of the wing kind of resting a little bit below where the face is. Like here's the eye, right below it is kind of like where the start of that wing is. And that curve kind of like starts up here and extends backwards and creates this kind of like teardrop shape that goes back towards the rest of the bird. You can imagine that like the long feathers that spread out later are going to be like right there. We're not gonna focus on those details just yet, but we are going to block in that wing. Funny enough, my body that I drew kind of has a similar curve. It starts about here, just below the head of the bird. So I'm gonna block in on that curve, just this long shape for the wing, like a teardrop going back. extending past the little egg shape that we drew for the body. And kind of like with the beak, I feel like depending on the kind of bird um, that we're aiming to draw, what reference we have, the wing might be much longer or shorter, depending on how that bird flies. For us, it looks like the wing is a bit longer than the base body that we have here. Just like I kind of drew a little part of it, like sticking out like this. Now, the part that I have, and we'll go back and add details to the wing, by the way, we're, we're not you know, going to stop right now. I kind of want to have the whole bird drawn in before we give it some fun stuff. Um, but. The thing that I feel like gets me a lot when I draw birds is that in my mind, I know that birds have like generally kind of like skinny little legs that help hold up their bodies and also help like them uh, grab onto like branches and other things for them to perch on. Uh, but in my mind, yeah, they have little legs and those little legs just kind of stick out from underneath them. But that doesn't quite look like it does in the photo. In the photo, we can kind of see that this bird's legs are not just sticking straight out from underneath it, but they're at an angle going from the back of the bird forward. Now that angle, everybody, is helpful for the bird to be able to balance. You can see that like most of the weight of the bird's body is over here. And the weight of its feathers are all sticking out this way. So to balance that out, if we just had this here, one way might top all over the other and cause a lot of issues for the bird. So the legs are leaning forward. So when we sketch our bird here, I'm going to go to the base of the body and I'm just going to draw a nice little line sticking forward. And kind of using this same photo as inspiration, I'm going to draw another leg behind it like this. This bird has a lot of plumage, a lot of feathers underneath its body and giving it a nice round shape. So we can't see a lot of the way that the legs look like inside of it. But because of that, we're also not going to worry too much about it. Nice, I see that some people drew that part of the legs already. Two little lines isn't too much to ask, I think, so we can do that pretty quickly. You can kind of imagine the zigzag of the balance beam that the bird is, kind of just like doop, doop through its legs. And even though we can't see them very well in my photograph, you can see that the bird's 
little talons. It has its like little toe sticking out over here and then a nice hook for a nail that's holding itself onto the branch. We can imagine that the bird's toes in the very front are also doing a similar thing. Depending on the species of bird, it has, it's also how many talons it'll have. I have parakeets at home and they have two in the front. But I've also seen pictures of like eagles and stuff and owls that have three, with the exception of the one that goes backward. So we're gonna make sure so that the bird is able to kind of balance, walk, and be able to hold onto things, that it has one little claw that sticks back. I'm gonna give mine just like a little nail. And then mine's gonna have two that stick forward. And in the spirit of my little birds that I have downstairs. So one of those little claws is gonna stick back and then the other two are gonna go forward. Our bird is little and it has tiny little legs, so we're not gonna worry too much about the details there. For those of you who maybe have seen uh, a bird up close, maybe you've held one, maybe you've looked at like chickens or something, you know that bird legs have like kind of a scaly texture to them. So if you wanted to make the legs a little bit thicker and you wanted to add that detail, you could. I'm gonna stick with just keeping them as like little sticks for now. But the bird's toes being kind of spread out with one in the back, and the angle of its legs are going to give it kind of the counterbalance for its body. Even though its legs are not very um, fit, it can still do, it can still keep itself standing up nice and sturdy. If you're fancy and you're feeling inspired, you could draw like a little stick for it to sit on. Ooh, look, a leaf. There we go. Proves it's a stick. Maybe this claw should go like that instead. But don't feel like you need to draw any backgrounds on our creatures today, just if you are feeling kind of excited about it. Now, the last thing that we have not drawn yet on our bird is a tail. Now, on my like cartoon bird that I drew from memory, my tail was just like a big old triangle. Um, and that would be kind of accurate if this bird was in flight. When a bird is flying, its tail would spread out to help it steer while it's flying in the air. But our bird is just kind of standing there. And when my bird's at home and the bird in this photograph, you can kind of see it a little bit, um, are just kind of like perched, the tail feathers fold up and help balance them out while they're sitting. And those are going to continue off of the wing that we already drew and end in like a small little stub a curve, and then those are going to go up and kind of just disappear behind the wing. We've got this folded up little fan of feathers right there that extends way past where the wing is. And it's gonna scoop up and be kind of hidden underneath uh, that wing. For those of you who are um, kind of keeping pace and have your shapes down, if you look at your bird and you're like, hey, that does feel like a very well-balanced bird. We've got a nice kind of like soft and pudgy front part. We've got long, graceful feathers balancing out from behind and little legs holding onto um, the ground or branch underneath. If you like that balance, if it looks good, then let's add some details. If you're like, mm, maybe my tail could be longer. I don't know, maybe the head feels too big. You are totally free to go in and change those shapes and balance them out now that we have our whole bird down. Sometimes you don't really know where to balance a picture until you've seen all of the parts come together. And because we're just kind of doing some quick sketching and drawing together, not trying to do any like big finished projects, you can go back and erase them. I didn't get to cover this when we first started, um, but I do recommend today, instead of doing kind of like hard drawing lines where like you're not lifting up your pencil, I would recommend doing sh like softer, shorter strokes that are going to be much easier to erase and give you a quicker workflow. That's kind of the difference between sketching and drawing. In drawing, you're trying to refine your lines, you're trying to make them 
um, look really nice and polished. When you're sketching, you're going for speed, speed and getting information down. Now for adding details, you can look at the photograph um, and kind of pick and choose the details that you like, or you can kind of follow along and add some here. I'm going to go in and erase the parts of the body that are being covered by the wing. And the top part of the wing over here that kind of connects to the body. I'm going to erase the line over here, kind of where the chest of the bird is. And I'm also going to erase the circle that we use to build up the head shape. And we got ourselves a pretty fair little bird shape. If you would like, you can also add things like the feathers that we see kind of like streaking up towards the like what I'll call kind of like the elbow of the wing. We'll talk more about wing anatomy later if we get the chance, but I'm going to draw some nice long lines that go up for where that is. They're kind of at an angle, so the line down here is a little longer, this one shorter, this one ends over here. The tail could have some lines there too. And if you wanted to, you could break up parts of our bird here with like little scoop lines for where the feathers are. By scoop lines, I kind of mean like these little like U shapes that we use to kind of make that texture of feathers. Birds can be so many different colors too. So if you're really happy with your sketch, you could come back into it later and add colors of your own. Okay, the back of my bird is nice and smooth. Left a little line here around the eye. I'm just going to erase that. If it's helpful for you to actually leave those lines of the body and the head, because it's kind of like when you're studying, you can look at your notes if you wanted to draw a bird again later. It's totally up to you. And with a couple shapes, a little photo reference, and some details, I think we've drawn a pretty cool bird so far. If any of you guys would like to show off your sketch of a bird, even if it's not all the way done, you can totally hold it up to the camera if you feel like sharing. If you're still working on it, then definitely keep going. Whoa, Pragan, I really like your sketch. I like that you have nice dark lines on the outside. Looking cool. Ooh, Amy, your bird looks so cute. Ooh, Angelo, the feet look like they're very nice and sturdy on your drawing. All right, nice. You got some pretty cool looking birds out there. Ooh, Vanessa, I like yours too. <laughs> Ooh, Jackson, yours felt nice and balanced too. I love that we're thinking about how like the head shape and the legs and the body shape go together. Ooh, Dakshina, I really like your branch and your leaf. I feel like yours are starting to look like a whole nature drawing. Sasbita, I really like the like under like um sketching that you put in there. It makes it look like your bird has different colored feathers already. Nice. There's a, the, these are looking really cool. Oh, I'm so excited to draw more animals, you guys. Alrighty, if you feel like you still want to sketch and add more to your bird, you're totally free to do so. Um, but we are going to start moving into our next animal. So you can put your last finishing touches on the bird where you're at. And we're going to move into a separate critter. If we have time at the end, I'll teach you guys about how to draw a bird with its wings open. We'll see what we can get through. But our second animal inspo 
that we talked about when we did our kind of like first little sketch here. Where did mine go? There it is. Was a bunny. Now, the things that we practiced when we were drawing our bird are actually going to come in handy when we draw a rabbit, even though, you know, they are very different creatures. But the approach to drawing animals is all kind of the same. You just adjust your shapes um, and sizes of things as you go. A rabbit is going to have very different limbs. It doesn't quite have wings and its legs are very different than a bird. So that's something that we're going to pay attention to for this next one. But let's go ahead and get a blank piece of paper or you can draw on the same paper with your bird if you have room on the side. And I'm going to show us our photo inspiration for our rabbit. So we're going for kind of like a nice basic um, shape for a rabbit. It's not like a big long eared fluffy one. It's also not a hare. Hares are kind of like rabbits, but like a little bit more muscular, a little bit more wild. Um, this is kind of like a nice in between of like a very, very fluffy one um, and a more athletic rabbit. Now, when we start drawing this one, whenever I look for an image um, for like drawing an animal, I try to find one when I'm still kind of like learning the critter um, to like a photo that has a lot of its body showing all at once. Um, at this rabbit picture, I think was very fortunate that it was on a white background because we don't have like grass and other nature things kind of getting in the way. I also like that we're looking directly at the side of the rabbit's face um, so we can understand the shape of its skull and the placement of the eye. Um, so that's, that's something that maybe you want to look for when you're drawing your own um, animals later on. But let's go ahead and start drawing this rabbit together. Kind of like how when we started drawing our bird, I'm going to start with the head but I do want to leave a little bit of extra room on the top because they do have very nice long ears and we don't want to have to like, you know, miss drawing those. So up here, I'm going to start mine right over here on the side. Um, I could draw a circle for the um, rabbit's head, but I feel like an egg shape with the nose pointing forward would be a little bit more accurate to what we see here. So let's go ahead and try and draw a shape like that, leaving room both behind and on the top for um, the rest of the body. So here we go with a nice oval shape with the nose part kind of sticking forward. Kind of looks like we left an egg on the counter. While we draw our oval here, I see a question in the chat. Mariella asks, what would you search up to find the photos? Whenever I try to look for a photo, if I'm not looking through like maybe a book of animals, I would recommend using like maybe like nature photography or something like a National Geographic. They're really cool animals in those. Um, but if you're looking on the internet, I would put like rabbit and then the search term after reference it's easy to draw with this pen a little harder to write rabbit reference and maybe like photo or pic and that will usually show you a picture of the subject that you want to draw that is like um kind of like the one that you see below there isn't anything kind of distracting it and the uh animal is going to be in a neutral pose like it's just standing all right so let's move on to the next one we can see that the egg shape for the rabbit's head, oops, you're welcome. Um, the egg shape for the rabbit's head is up here and kind of similarly to the bird, we have this kind of like nice big roundish shape underneath that is much bigger than, I, um, than the last bird that we saw. There's a little bit of extra shape over here that we're gonna get into, um, but you can kind of imagine that the rabbit's backbone is kind of like up towards like this. So we're going to mimic that backbone shape with the um, oval that we're going to be drawing. And this shape, you might draw a really big rabbit today. The shape might be small and it might be a little bit more like a baby rabbit. Whichever one is going to be just fine. If you are kind of aiming more for one or the other, you can change that sign as we go. But kind of similarly to the bird, Let's not get stuck in the details until we see all parts of it laid out and then we can adjust the sizes as we go. Hmm. 
my rabbit looks like it might be a little on the bigger side, but I'm cool with that. Alrighty. Once you have those two shapes, let's go ahead and focus on the rabbit's head details first, just to kind of like know where we're at here. Um, if you look at the rabbit in the photo, we see one of the rabbit's eyes because it is facing sideways. And that rabbit's eye is kind of like higher up on that head than like the middle per se. I would say that the middle of the rabbit's head is right here and the rabbit's eye is just a bit above. So if I'm looking at my oval here, the center of my oval feels like it's about there. So I'm gonna make, let me just put a dot there. So I'm gonna make my rabbit's eye just a little higher than that. If you're a fan of drawing animals, like maybe you're into drawing creatures already, or maybe you like drawing uh, things inspired by animals like Pokemon um, or other kind of like video game creatures, you can add your own spin to this if you want. Like maybe you want to make your eye a little cuter. Maybe you have a style that you like to draw them in. Or maybe you like really like drawing like accurate uh, animals. I'll leave that up to you. But as long as we have the eye placement somewhere that kind of feels like the photograph, I think that we're still doing the learning and the practice still. Maybe it's kind of like an oval shape. I think the rabbit's eye is a little bit more like this shape. So maybe I'll adjust it, make it more like a leaf shape. But I'm not trying to get caught up in the details. If you just draw an oval, I think you're fine. And then the rabbit's nose. Now, on a cartoon rabbit, we probably draw like the circle. Here's the eyes. And to make something cute, we usually put the nose kind of right between the eyes. But the rabbit nose that we see here is actually like kind of lower and on the end of the face. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw a little triangle shape in the front for that rabbit nose. And then I'm going to erase the top part of that time. Erase a little bit so you can see more of the shape that I drew. We can see kind of in the photo if we zoom in that the rabbit nose, it does have some color on it kind of in the front. But unlike a cartoon rabbit that has a triangle nose that is usually like pink or black or something, there isn't a whole bunch of color on the top. That's just the fur. And then while we're noticing details on that front part of the face, you'll also notice that distinct little line that comes down from the nose. So we have that V shape for the top part of the nose, the line that goes down. And then right underneath here, is where the rabbit's mouth would be. That's where we get that classic triangle, line, line kind of mouth idea. We can see here that the cheeks of the rabbit and everything kind of make up a lot of that front part. So we'll go in there. Your oval might have room for this. You might not have too much, but I'm going to draw a little line and then I'm going to kind of erase the bottom part of the oval and then give it that little cheek shape. Give the other side over here. Kind of like a V shape, a line, and then the little whoop whoop. You might like kind of be adjusting and moving stuff um, on this facial feature for a little bit, but I would actually totally just leave it for now. And you can change it up as we start adding the rest of the fur kind of shape and volume to the rest of the head. Because right now we just have like this awkward little like egg shape with a face on it. It'll start to make more sense when we start putting it together. I think a feature that could really help our rabbit feel like a rabbit are gonna be the big ears that you know the creature is known for. When we think of rabbit ears, a lot of the time we think that they're like smack dab on the top of their head, um, and they're really not. Like if we were dividing this head shape up in half, we know that the eye is not quite in the middle of it, and the ears 
look like they're kind of placed on the back part of the rabbit's skull here, the back and towards like right here. They're not placed in the middle like this, even if we're looking at it from the side. They are on the back of the rabbit's head. I see kind of like a curved shape that goes upward on one side and then a curved shape that goes down. And then the line that divides kind of that front part of the ear going up and then disappearing as we go up to the top of the ear. So we're going to try to mimic that on our own rabbit by going to the back of the head that we drew. Not the very back, like right here, but kind of like right behind the eye. And I'm going to draw myself a nice long ear sticking up as one big long curve. And then I'm going to sketch the rest of my curve going down this way. I'll add that line that kind of shows the front of the ear and the part that kind of curves. And as you can see, we can still spot the other ear of the rabbit kind of behind that first one and getting covered up a little bit. So I'm going to, once I'm happy with the shape of my ear that I just drew, pretty closely next to that one, I'm going to draw a second ear. It's going to be just a little shorter. It's not shorter because this rabbit is like, has uneven ears. It's because one of the ears is a little further away from us than the other. I'm going to start moving this along a little bit so that we can try and finish our rabbit before our time is up. We're going to start breaking up this egg-shaped body to be a little bit more like the body that we see down here. The back of our rabbit, we can kind of see where the head ends. The curve of the back just kind of starts oops, and keeps going all the way down to the end of our rabbit. But that egg shape that we drew leaves a lot to be seen over here in the front. This front part of our rabbit that we see here is a lot of kind of like fluffy fur. And then within that, we also see the rabbit's little leg. Oops. Sorry, guys, my brush just switched to a different. There we go. All right. We see that the rabbit's leg kind of like sticks out amongst the fur that we see here in the front. So we're going to try to mimic that here as well. A rabbit's leg actually does not just stick out from underneath. It's much longer than what we see. A rabbit's shoulder is actually up here. And you can imagine that the shoulder bone goes down and it has an elbow, just like me and you. From that elbow, the rabbit's leg sticks forward. And then down here at the bottom, we just see the rabbit's foot. All of this information here is actually hidden inside of the fur. But depending on the photograph that you're looking at, you might catch some of that if the rabbit is in movement. So I'm going to come back over here to our drawing. And I'm going to pretend that somewhere over here next to the head, just like how our head and our shoulders are pretty close together, so is the one here for our rabbit. So I'm going to pretend that the leg is here, or that the arm is here, the shoulder, and that angle is going to go down kind of here towards the um, bottom part of my oval. Draw a little circle for where it's going to bend. And then our rabbit's arm is going to stick forward from there, just a little bit further out from the circle. The size of this, bo this bone here and this bone here are kind of the same in a lot of animals. And then we have a little foot that sticks out underneath. Kind of looks like we're making a little robot rabbit with this like tiny little framework arm. But we're gonna we're gonna make it look good and fluffy, I promise. I'm going to draw two lines that are going to help make this um, leg look a little bit more like our rabbits, 
or his arm. Sorry, I keep calling it a leg. This is the rabbit's arm. And I'm going to draw a line that connects it so like that. And I'm going to connect the other one to the back of the paw. I'm going to make the rabbit's paw look a little bit more like a paw by just kind of redrawing that round part in the front and then drawing two curved lines to show the separation of where the rabbit's fingers would be. We just had to have this like soft swooping uh, little arm sticking out from under here, imagining that the rest of the arm kind of keeps going within the uh, rabbit's fur. And then underneath the rabbit's head, kind of below the chin, I would call it like right here, we're going to add the fluffy fur of the front of the chest. You can just draw a curved line like this if you want to. Or instead of the curve, you can draw little lines for where the fluff would be, giving it a little texture. I'll keep that line here really light so you can see it. That's my original shape. Here is the fluffy front part that I drew. You can erase this line if you want to. And sometimes it's also nice to make the line that is on the bottom part of the skull fluffy too. Just erase it and then turn that into like little, little scoop shapes. I'll let you guys kind of play around with that just a little bit more. Your rabbit could have more fur, less fur. The arm could be more extended out. It could be shorter. Totally up to the way that you're kind of practicing and envisioning it. And again, you can always change it later if you think that one part came out too long or too big. Now, a photo reference, everybody, is super helpful, as we've seen, to figure out the shapes and the details of an animal that maybe we don't remember in our heads. If you ever want to really know and understand a creature, it's good to look at its anatomy. Anatomy is a word that means kind of like the way that the insides of something is built. Like a human anatomy picture can show you like our muscles, maybe our different organs or our skeleton and all the things and systems that we have. Animals have that kind of stuff too. And understanding their skeletal structures, their muscle structures can really give you a um, a big one up when you're trying to draw. I've done a little bit of that studying myself, so I'm going to cut the work for you and just kind of tell you the stuff that we can see here. Um, but uh, that can also be helpful if you're looking up stuff too. Anatomy is spelled like this, A-N-A-T-O-M-Y. Now, the inside anatomy of a rabbit's leg is kind of interesting. It's similar to the arm where we don't see a lot of the bones and the shapes because our rabbit is really fluffy. But we can imagine from like cartoons and even from the way that the fur is shaped here that we have a big round shape and then the foot that sticks out underneath. That's kind of a familiar um, look of like a rabbit that we might have seen drawn um, uh, on something. But the inside anatomy of that leg is very different. That leg doesn't go like this, doink, doink. That's just an L shape. There's more to it than that. Our rabbit's back keeps going back over here. And the rabbit leg actually starts off right about there. The hip is over here. The rabbit's knee is up here because its leg is folded up underneath. And then the rest of the bone goes down this way. And the foot, nice and long, is down here. You can imagine that this kind of spring shape of the um, leg folded up underneath would give a lot of power to the muscles of the rabbit as it jumps or tries to run. Kind of spring loaded. Like if you were like crouching down yourself, your legs would also go up, your knees would be high, low, and then your feet would be planted ready to pounce. Now this I'm drawing just so that we can understand why a rabbit has this shape here. 
This is the fur and the muscles and the everything else that is on top of the rabbit with the leg like this. And then we have our little shape underneath. We're gonna simplify it for ourselves and we're just gonna draw that curved shape for the rabbit's um, knee going up. And then the foot, nice and long, planted underneath. Kind of matching and balancing where that foot, or where the front leg is. And if you're happy with that shape that we drew, you can add a little bit more detail to the front of that rabbit foot by drawing those curved lines to again show the different toes that the rabbit has. This curve shape, you might make it longer, you might make it shorter, it might need some adjusting. I made it kind of go up and almost reach to where uh, the rabbit's arm anatomy is, but not quite. Once you've got the leg in there and the leg details that you prefer, you can add some more details to your rabbit to kind of break up all of these hard shapes that we made and make it the fluffy creature that we know by erasing this bottom line here in between the foot and the arm and then drawing the kind of like fluffy marks that we did on the chest but in between here and there. We can see that down here below in the photo there's kind of like this softer shaggy fur underneath. And then towards the back of our rabbit, you can see it a little bit in the photo here, but I think that the way this rabbit is sitting, you can't see it a lot, but the rabbit's tail is hidden right underneath itself like this. The rabbit's tail is not all the way up here because this is kind of like where a lot of other stuff is happening. The curve of the back keeps going down. The rabbit's backbone kind of keeps going and ends down here where the hip is. So the tail would be sticking out all the way down here at the bottom. So instead of drawing the tail up here, which would not be very accurate, we're gonna draw our tail down here below. You can choose to make it a fluffy tail like this. You can make it more of a jagged tail if you want. You can also just keep it as a round tail. Depending on like the fur quality of a rabbit, there's lots of species of rabbits out there, lots of breeds, I guess, of rabbits. Um, uh, that people have kind of like kept as pets and, you know, chosen the best colors and done the same thing that kind of like dogs do, you know, lots of different colors of dogs, lots of shapes and furs. Now, even though my rabbit has a whole bunch of lines on it, if you were to go back and erase a lot of these um, little buildup lines that we use to understand the shape of our creature, you'll see that we have a picture of a rabbit that looks maybe a lot like some that you might have seen in the past, but I think the size and the placing of everything makes it feel just a little bit more like a natural drawing, an, obser an observational drawing of um, a rabbit. I'm going to go back up here, maybe add some details to the ear. There's like fluff in the ear. That fluff in there kind of protects the rabbit's ear from getting any dirt or anything inside of it. I can add a couple more fluffy lines to the front, maybe add some to its back. Sometimes fur is nice to add if you just kind of do little dashed lines instead of the scoops. Um, something that I like to do, if I drew an arm and a leg already, I will do kind of a mirror of that arm and leg. If you look over here at the arm, I can draw a second one that's hiding behind the arm, kind of like we did with the ear to give it that little, like, you know, oh, that second leg hiding over there. You can do the same thing with its hind leg, just give it like a second little shape. I'm gonna shade those in so that you can tell that they're further away. I'm 
Let me make my rabbit's head a little bit fluffier. And you can add things like a rabbit's whiskers, a little divots for the whiskers. Maybe you didn't love the eye that you drew the first time, so you can go back and change it if you want. Animal details are fun because you can really take kind of like your own spin on what you see in the photograph and how you translate that into simpler lines on your drawing. Maybe some of you are really into shading. You love to do um, the soft colors of like fur. Nice. So Vita gave a thumbs up to the shading. <laughs> maybe some of you are more like, I don't know, maybe you like drawing cartoons and anime. So outlines make more sense to you. All of us observe things a little differently and we pull different details from an image like the photo of the rabbit dog. How we translate those details into a line drawing is really up to us. But having a photograph as a reference, maybe even doing the extra mile and understanding the anatomy of a creature, how its body is um, structured and built up, can really take your drawings from being kind of like a simple cartoon representation to being something a little bit more lifelike, like the bird and the rabbit that we drew today. I wish we had like all the time in the world to draw like a ton more animals, but we did do a lot of observation with what we did um, today. And I'll give you a bonus tip. If you begin to study like a four-legged animal, if you begin to study like pictures of birds or maybe you're into like bugs, those creatures share a lot of similarities to other ones. Now, even though a rabbit I'll just show a picture real quick before I hand it over. And a cat are very different creatures. You can kind of see some of those similarities from what we were talking about before. Like our rabbit's shoulder starts up here, its elbow is here, and its leg is there. If we look at this cat, a cat's shoulder is also near its head. Its elbow is down here at the where its body kind of starts. And the rest of its leg goes down here with its paw in it. The rabbit, where it's sitting, its leg zigzags like this. You can imagine that the cat's leg zigzags like this. That's a little insider knowledge again for me having looked at some of these animals before, but I bet you if you guys did your own research and looked at photos that inspired you, you would notice these things too and be able to draw way more creatures than just the two that we covered today. Thank you guys for joining me today. I'm gonna hand it over to our host and I'll give you a little goodbye again as well. But this was super fun and I hope you guys enjoyed drawing animals today and that this inspired more animal drawings later on. Definitely, I was very inspired. Just as I predicted, I was able to follow and draw something. You always make me feel like I'm a really good artist. So thank you. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it too. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for joining us for today's very special and inspiring event. We hope to see you again at a library program uh, very soon, including our two upcoming Zoom events with the East Bay Parks. I'm gonna add that to the chat so you can sign up. I again um, added the link of uh, Mr. Abe's online program that you could do at any point about designing an ecosystem. So that link is in there too. You don't have to sign up for that. You just go there and do it. So please uh, do that and also sign up for our East Bay Parks. First one is tomorrow. And thank you so much for coming. We will end here. I'm gonna end the recording. If you stay on and you have a question that you wanna ask Mr. Abe, I'm sure he'll stay for another couple of minutes because we did promise that you would get to, but we just had so much fun. So I'm gonna stop the recording, but you can stay on and talk to Mr. Abe if you want.